the cry comes out of something that I have shared with you before. But here it comes again. Pastor Nunes used to say, I don't repeat myself because I'm getting old. <laughs> I repeat myself because you didn't get it. And he was right. The cry comes out of this. It comes from thank you. Begins there. Comes out of this. <clears throat> the alarm goes off in the morning. And I think when the alarm goes off, we are all alike. Except maybe for Jojo. <laughs> Just saying. I can imagine Jojo, when the alarm goes off, I can imagine her saying, Thank you, Jesus, for another day. Where's my camera? But the rest of us, we love Jesus. We're thankful for life. If you've given him your life, he lives inside of you. But for the rest of us, when the alarm goes off, it's like, Jesus, help me. Help me. And then we grab our coffee. I, ha I have a theology that if the children of Israel had had coffee, <laughs> they had have gone through that desert. <laughs> Just a thought. Just a thought. <clears throat> so you grab your coffee, <clears throat> and while you're trying to get yourself ready in front of the makeup mirror, thank you, Craig, <clears throat> you get up from in front of the makeup mirror, <clears throat> and you put a load of laundry in the washer. Then... As you get your, finish getting yourself ready and you get your second cup of coffee and you're driving to work, you're realizing, I didn't take anything out of the freezer for supper <laughs> or dinner, whatever you call it at your house. And so you make a note to yourself and you think, okay, on the way home, the line is going to be too long at Costco, so I will go to Freshco. I will pick up something at Freshco on the way home so we have something for supper. Okay, note to self. Then, on 680, it says the gas is going up at midnight. So, okay, second note to self. Stop at Fresh Go for something for dinner and get gas because it's going up at midnight. So then, you go on to work. And when we have given our lives complete, it's kind of nice with the pulpit not here. Then, what, while, I, while you're at work and you, you, you are living your life filled with Jesus, while you're at work, and, I, and God help us all to do this, you are doing your job with all your heart as unto the Lord and not as unto man. So then, on the way home, you stop at, I love you guys so much, for something for supper. And then you get, because it's going up at midnight. You guys are awesome. Then you go home, put the groceries on the counter, and you go and put the load that was in the washer into the dryer. So then you make dinner, you sit down and you eat dinner, and then you clean up from dinner. Now, if you have children, it's a whole different ballgame. The birthday man says, oh, man. <laughs> there are baths, and, there, and there's homework. And, and so then you go and put, put, take the load out of the, out of the dryer that was in the dryer. You've got, now got another load that's in the washer. Okay, so then you bring your load from the dryer upstairs, and, and while you're folding laundry, you watch stuff that you've PVR'd because, because the shows that you like are not on when you're home. So, you, so you've PVR'd them, so you're folding laundry and watching, and watching what you have PVR'd. Then, <clears throat> then you get caught up on, on some of your voicemails, and then you answer some of your emails, and then you fall in bed. And you say, Jesus, I love you. Help me sleep.
and in your spirit rises a thought, an ache, a longing. This is not the cry, but this is what gives rise to the cry. In your spirit, this is what rises up. There's got to be more for me than this. I've told you that before, and I'm bringing it before you this morning to prepare you for the cry. Jesus suffered and died on the cross and took all of my sin. I am completely forgiven. He is living inside of me. He is sitting at the right side of the Father, interceding for me. He is preparing a home for me that when I breathe my last, I am with him. He has done all of this. Surely it was, it was to be that my life would count for more than this. And so out of it comes the cry. And the cry is found in the Christmas story. I know it's Easter. I am not disoriented. <laughs> First Sunday of spring. I got it. I'm there. But this is in the Christmas story. Luke chapter 1. We know this story so well. The story of the angel coming to Mary. And yes, I'm using the amplified. Just get over it. We love all the words in the Amplified. The angel comes to Mary and, and explains to her, you are young, you are a virgin. You've heard about how the Messiah was going to come and be born of a virgin. And Mary, it's going to be you. Luke chapter 1, let's pick up the story at verse 34. <clears throat> and Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no intimacy with any man as a husband? Then the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you as a shining cloud. And so the holy, pure, sinless thing which shall be born of you will be called the Son of God. And listen, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is now the sixth month with her who was called barren. Listen to this. We could read this and go home. I'm not going to let you, but you could. <clears throat> For with God, nothing is ever impossible. And no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. No word from God will be without power or be impossible of, of fulfillment. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to what you have said. And the angel left her. Now, in this story is the cry. But there's something that precedes the cry. And I know you're saying to me, get to the cry already. It's coming. But before the cry is a powerful statement. In this version, Mary says, behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Some versions say, Behold the servant of the Lord. But in 2015, March 22nd in the embassy, this is the way we would say it. I'm yours. Thank you. I'm yours. The old song went, Sherry, where are you? How'd it go? Everything I am. Everything I'm not. 
all the good stuff, so much bad stuff. I'm yours. I am so totally and completely yours. Thank you. And now here's the cry. You ready? Here's the cry. I'm going to give it to you from the King James because that's how I've been crying it. Here's the cry. Be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word. I have seen mighty things happen in the lives of other people. I have seen you do tremendous supernatural things through the lives of other people. I have read about it. When the conference comes, I'm going to hear more about it. But here's my cry. Be it unto me. Be it unto me. We used to sing an old hymn that said, Well, on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Be it unto me, Lord. And let it be unto me. Don't just do it with me or to me or alongside me or somewhere where I can see. Do it in me and out of me. Like having a baby. Do it in me. Be it unto me according to your word not according to anybody else's. And you know me. You know I'm not talking about co not coming under authority. You will never, ever be in authority. Hear me. You know this, but let me tell you. You will never be in authority until you come under authority. So that's not what I'm talking about. But some of you have had words spoken over you and into you that have crushed you and sliced and diced you and broken you and held you back. And I am declaring, be it unto you according to his word and nothing else. Nothing else. Lord, not according to my skill set. Not according to my education, not according to my age, not according to my ideas. Be it unto me according to your word and nothing less. Nothing less. When I was in my mid to late 30s, Getting into the late 30s, I was still single. My parents were praying. I think my mom prayed that, that verse, nothing is impossible with you. <laughs> oh, God bless her. But I, was, I was still single, and um, I had left my nursing career, and I was... Um, speaking here and there and around. And there's one point that just is blazoned in my memory because it was a turning point. It's going to be a turning point for some of you this morning. I was preaching in California. Now, that sounds very glamorous, but believe me, it wasn't. And um, I think I was probably even staying in a motel. Um, and I, I remember I had my Bible open because I was preparing to speak someplace that evening. And I, I started saying to the Lord, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? What am I doing with the call that you have on my life? What am I doing here in this motel? And 
And John 15, verse 16. I'm, I'm going to share a couple of real personal things with you this morning because you are my family. John 15, verse 16, just came blazing off of the page and down into my spirit like a fire. And this is what it said. You didn't choose this. As a matter of fact, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And I set you apart. That you would go forth and you would bear fruit. And your fruit would remain. And by the way, while you're doing that, when you're doing that, whatever you need, just ask me. And I'll give it to you. I was on my face, as you can imagine. But you know, we are hilarious when we really know we've heard from God. I mean, we are hilarious. I, I was literally on my face, but I was saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will never ask you anything ever again. This is it. This is enough. I got it all. I will never ask you anything again. This is so cool. Until the next time. But from my heart to your spirit this morning, over the years since then, there have been so many times when it looked like it was not happening. And though I change, when I was single, I used to say to the Lord, I know you don't age, but I do. Bless God. <laughs> I've changed. Circumstances have changed. Where we live has changed. Where we come to church has changed. But the word of the Lord has never changed. Thank you. Thank you. I'm yours. Be it unto me according to your word and nothing less. Some of you might be thinking, well, how self-centered can we be? Me, 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 me. It's actually just the opposite. It's what Pastor Craig was talking about this morning. This is not being self-centered. This is being body of Christ centered. Because in this move of God that has already begun, never mind it's come and it's already begun, in this move of God, the heart of God is for us to move together as a body, each one members in particular. That's what the scripture is all about. If the whole body were an eye, it would take a lot of makeup. No, that's not the scripture. If the, if the whole body were an eye, where is the hearing? We are to move together, many members in particular. So when I am saying, be it unto me according to your word, I want my place in the body. And you might be as cute as an, as an anointed button, but I do not want your spot. I want my spot. Be it unto me according to your word. And nothing less. So how does this happen? This be it unto thing. 
you know, getting into me and out of me. And <laughs> Excuse me, how does, how does all this happen? Well, it's in the story. And Pastor Doug, I know you're watching Pastor Doug, so just giving you the credit here. Pastor Doug, we love you. Pastor Doug has been teaching this for a few years now. And every time he mentions it, it just leaps at me. How does this happen, this be it unto me, according to your word? It's right here. Verse 35, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will come upon you. And you might say, but when I got saved, I received Jesus Christ into my life, and he came by his spirit and lived inside of me, and lives inside of me. Besides which, I've been baptized with Holy Spirit, so I am praying in tongues, and I am worshiping in tongues, and I am interceding in tongues. What are you talking about? The Holy Spirit will come upon, upon me. I'm talking about what it says right here. God has ordained that his Holy Spirit would come upon you. He would put his hand on your little head and the Holy Spirit would come upon you for special acts of service. And it would encompass you like a glorious cloud because what he has planned for you to do in the body is impossible. Just so you know. You're not smart enough. You're not gifted enough. You're not experienced enough. You're not the right anything. It is impossible for you. But what God has declared is not impossible. It will be performed. Not one jot or tittle of it, the Bible says, will fall. Why? Because Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the glory of the Lord will surround you. Because you see, it's not about who you are. <laughs> It is not about what you can do. It is all about Jesus and what he has already done. Pardon my voice. Holy Spirit will come upon you. Before I came out here, Holy Spirit lives in me. I am filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But man, you got to know, I'm saying this is my family. If they're going to be fed your word, Holy Spirit, come upon me. So where does it happen? Where does... Be it unto me according to your word. Where, where does it happen? And, and how in the world do you know what the word is? I'm so glad you asked. It happens in the secret place. When all the embassy family isn't there, It's just me and you. It's just me and you. Because you see, it's kind of like the getting pregnant thing in the story. It can start in public. But the implanting of the word inside of you so that it starts to grow and starts to change you and starts to come out of you happens in private. And the more you long for that secret place, the more you long for that, that, that time where it's just you and him, the more clarity you will have in his word to you. So if Dr. Russ or Pastor Doug or anyone speaks a word over you, go home. And be alone with God and let him plant it. I want to say something else to you. Some of you 
know what the word of the Lord is to you. But it was a long time ago. You know what the word of the Lord is, but time has gone by and you haven't seen anything happen. For one thing, I call to you from my heart to revive the secret place. Don't miss coming here. Don't miss hearing what the Lord is saying. But I am calling you back into a, a re-enlivened, quiet, secret, private place with God. Let me tell you something else that God will do. He will give you an Elizabeth. He will give you someone to walk alongside of you whose heart beats and whose spirit leaps with what is in yours. And please, you do not need 10 of these. You just need one. And listen to mama. Oh, my goodness. Do not, do not, do not come out of your secret place knowing what the word of the Lord is to you. And say, be it unto me according to this word. Be it unto me according to your word. Do not come out of your secret place knowing what it is and tell everybody. Don't do it. People will not realize what they are doing, but they will trample on it. They, they, will, they, will, break you. they will break it up. They will... They will hinder you. They will hurt you. And they'll go on their way to Tim Hortons not having any clue what they have done to you. They didn't mean to do it. Don't tell everybody. God will send you an Elizabeth. Because words that people say when they don't even realize what they're saying can hinder the timing. The word of God to you. Mary amazes me in this story because it says later on, she kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. She didn't even tell Joseph. I mean, that just blows me away. She didn't even tell Joseph. I would have been like so there. Joe. You know, you've always heard how, how, how the Messiah is going to come and, and he's going to be born of a young virgin. Like, Joe, it's me. <laughs> that would have been so me. So me. But she didn't even tell Joseph. God told Joseph, hear me this morning. The people, even the people that you love, the people that you value what they think so much, the word that the Lord has spoken to you, the word that is being planted in you and coming out of you, they will see it soon enough. Just you and him. And he will give you an Elizabeth. I want to tell you one more thing about thank you. I'm yours. Be it unto me according to your word and nothing less. I want to tell you one more thing about that. I told you I was going to share a couple of personal things. And this is the other one. I think you all realize that God has given me 
the best husband on the planet. Thank you, Jesse. He was on the camera for the, those that didn't make sense to. We got married on a Friday evening with lots of candles because we were older and we thought it would make us look better. And we pulled it off. So the wedding was on a Friday evening. <clears throat> Rehearsal was on the Thursday. And uh, <clears throat> the weekend prior to that, <clears throat> I was on my last weekend with a team that was called the Mobilized, a Mobilized to Serve team. <clears throat> now this was a team of, of just amazing people in Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. It was like... Um, it was like a university in Holy Spirit just to be traveling with this team. And I was like along for the ride. You know, it was just um, amazing to work with them. <clears throat> and the whole uh, theme, the whole reason for Mobilize to Serve was this. We ministered to single adults. Um, and many of the, of the um, conferences and things that, that Mobilize to Serve would hold would be in, in arenas and stuff in the States, and it would be pretty big. And, and in that crowd of singles were, were people of all ages, people who were single for many different reasons, um, some who were broken, some who were healing, but many who were skilled and educated and proficient in different areas of life. But also, they... Many of them had been stagnant. They'd been in a holding pattern because of what they had gone through, either in their marriage or, <clears throat> excuse me, in um, never having been married or, or through grief, through losing someone. <clears throat> and so our theme, our reason for being with them, was not to say, we want, we want them all to come to Jesus, and ma many of them had already. They loved the Lord, um, and many did come to the Lord in our conferences. But besides, besides bringing Jesus to them, our aim was not to, to say to them, let's get you married so you can really get into the will of God for your life. That wasn't our theme at all. The whole thrust behind what we were doing was God has a plan for your life. He has a word that's just for you, be it unto you according to his word. And the whole idea was to mobilize them into the kingdom of God. And if they were headed overseas because that's what God had, had implanted into them and they were to be married, man, they would meet their partner in the bush. There was no problem with having to run into God's right one for them. But our whole thing was get mobilized into your purpose into the kingdom of God. You'll be healed and made whole on the way. And so I was just on fire with this. I did not want people coming together moaning. Let me tell you what I've been through. Well, let me tell you what I've been through. I wanted to light this fire under them and get them going into the purpose of God for their lives. So it was the Sunday before the Friday of our wedding. And I had this thing in my heart that I did not want John to know. He knows now, okay? <laughs> He's good. He's more than good. But I had this thing in my heart I get married and leave this, am I stepping down from your word?
to me? Am I settling for less because I want to be with John? Am I settling for less than what your word is to me? So on the Sunday morning, John was not with me. He was an assistant pastor. He, he couldn't be there. <clears throat> they put a chair on the platform and sat me in it. I was just sharing this with Matt Taylor. The other day we were talking about his wedding. They sat me in the chair. And they surrounded me and laid hands on me. I want you to know Holy Spirit will never embarrass you. <laughs> but Holy Spirit will not leave anything in there that is going to come in the way of be it unto me according to your word. So Paul Joe, <clears throat> Paul Johansson, Brenda and Don, Paul Johansson laid his hand on my head said, you have said in your heart, am I stepping down? Am I settling for less than your call, than your word by getting married? And as you can imagine, I just lost it. And I don't even remember the rest of what he said. I was so glad I got a recording of it. I used to be so against that. Why are you recording prophecies? They're a, they're a holy thing. Until I didn't hear it. Man, where is the recording? He went on to talk about the higher thing. Things that he'd already shown John that I knew nothing about. The higher thing that he was going to do with the two of us as one. And I am standing here to tell you that that was a battle in my heart that God gave me peace, of course, so I could take my vows on the Friday. But I'm telling you about that battle that I had in my heart because God knew. It was like on that platform he was saying, it's okay. <laughs> it's me. Because to me, if, if there was a choice between marriage, you might think this is easy for me to say, but it is. There's a choice between marriage and be it unto me according to your word. There's no contest. There's no contest. His word to you, his word to me, is worth everything. 